Good afternoon, everyone. My name is James. It's my honor to welcome you to the Hall of Presidents. Our presentation inside is a combination, a movie and a stage presentation with all 42 U.S. presidents, from George Washington all the way to our current president, George W. Bush, actually participating on stage. Our hall is a tribute to the accomplishments of these men who have protected our nation's constitution, the job of the president, the only thing they're specifically sworn to do. Please help us maintain the dignity and honor of our hall. If you have cell phones, radios, beepers, or walkie-talkies, please make sure now they're all turned off. Also, please refrain from eating, drinking, and photography. No photos. You may videotape if your camcorder lights are off and use the eyepiece. No view screens. Finally, if you have questions about these paintings, the artifacts, or the presidents themselves, please feel free to ask. Thank you. self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. With these words from the Declaration of Independence, we define ourselves as a nation. These few words embody the American dream. Without that dream, we would not be Americans. In 1787, after a bitter and bloody war against British rule, the 13 American states, which had united to win independence, sent representatives to a constitutional convention, charged with creating a document that would implement the principles of democracy for which they had fought so long and risked so much. Gentlemen, many issues have been resolved here and some have been set aside. Yet can we not agree that these constitutional liberties must extend to those Americans purchased and raised as slaves? some security to the southern states against an emancipation of slaves, we can never receive the flag. My good countrymen, the warmest friends this Constitution has do not contend that it is free from imperfections, but there is a constitutional door open for change. I think that the people can decide on the alterations and amendments which time may prove necessary. General Washington, sir. Mr. Franklin. Fellow delegates, I cannot help expressing a wish that every member of this convention who may still have objections to it would, with me, doubt a little of his own infallibility and put his name to this instrument. And so it was that we, the people, in an age ruled by monarchs and tyrants, established a government bound by the wishes and desires of the governed. That first generation of citizens soon chose George Washington as America's first president. We were going to be a land of opportunity in which the spirit of freedom would grow and expand with the American frontier. Yet planted in our path, every step of the way, were the seeds of unresolved conflict.
for summoning leaders equal to the deadliest crisis. And one of them was President Andrew Jackson. Brilliant, rough you, courageous. There's nothing that I shudder at more than the idea of separation of this union. I tell you, if a single drop of blood be shed in defiance of the laws of the United States, I will hang the first man I can get my hands on to the first tree I can find. In the end, the conflict would not be averted by words, by threats, by compromise, or by laws. Though many good men and women struggled to settle it in those ways. One of them was a humble, plain-spoken citizen, a self-taught lawyer named Abraham Lincoln. I tell you that this doctrine of Lincoln's declaring that all men are made equal by the Declaration of Independence and by divine providence is a monstrous heresy. He's a know-nothing. My fellow citizens, I believe this government cannot endure permanently half slave and half free. A house divided against itself cannot stand. <laughs> That's what you think, young drink of water? Yes, my friend. That's what I think. If you have listened to suggestions to believe that all men are not created equal, let me entreat you to come back. If the Declaration of Independence is not the truth, let us get the statute book in which we find it and tear it out. Who is so bold to do it? No one! I won't hide! If it is not true, let us tear it out! <laughs> let us stick to it then. Let us stand! Abraham Lincoln lost that election in 1858, but in losing, he won. For the people did not forget this impassioned man from the prairie who could not bring himself to violate the essential justice of the American dream. Two years later, they sent him to the White House. By then, the time for reasonable words had passed. I know there is a God, and that he hates injustice and slavery. I see the storm coming. I know his hand is in it. We Americans had given Lincoln the hardest task any American president would ever face. When our nation was formed, we had slaves among us. Yet that does not destroy the principle that is the charter of our liberties. Now is the time for decision, for firm, persistent, resolute action. I shall act as I deem best calculated to make America a union of hearts and hands as well as states. I wish to do justice to Paul. So the blood of Americans was shed in a great civil war. And when it was over, the nation had been preserved and the institution of slavery was gone forever. But the prejudice and injustice it left in its wake would test every generation of Americans down to our own. Still, the dream endured. As the frontiers of America pushed on to the Pacific Ocean and beyond, as waves of immigrants swelled our population, new voices rise to insist again and again that we the people must mean all the people. Freedom 
is a land without boundaries. The work of America will never be done. Each new generation will be asked to discover the part it must play. And each new generation will leave unfinished tasks for the generations that follow.